like to wish a very warm welcome to everyone and we begin the Easter liturgy with the lighting of the new fire. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, at dawn on this most holy morning, when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life, the Church invites her children throughout the world to come together in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of the Lord, we remember his death and resurrection. By hearing his word and celebrating his mysteries, confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever in God. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, make this new fire holy. Inflame us with your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time 
belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord. Guard us and keep us. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Amen. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Sent for this purpose, Jill will now sing the Exultet for us. Thank you. 
like to say thank you to Jill for recording the Exultet for us and sending it for this occasion. Jill is our parish deacon and curate and singing the Exultet is a very special thing and it's the work of the deacon on Easter morning and so I'm very grateful to her for sending it so that she could sing for us and I wanted just to describe the scene to you um, we're in the back garden of the rectory um, just in the doorway of the back of the house I'm looking out into the garden and I'm hoping that you can 
begin to see um, dawn breaking. There's one very important part of this beautiful liturgy that I wanted to try and recreate. The candle for us is a symbol of the risen Christ um, in our midst, um, bringing light out of darkness. And the candle once placed in its stand, which in this case I made in the garage just yesterday because we haven't got our church proper Easter candle stand. Once it's placed in its holder, a light is taken and I take the first light from the candle as the person presiding at the Eucharist today, but also for a very practical reason, so that I can see. But it's the next stage that's the most important, which is that the light is shared amongst all those present and also amongst the whole congregation and for the people of the parish as a whole and for all those um, connected with our community and symbolically for everyone in the world. And I'm not able to give that light to those gathered for the Easter Vigil outside the church um, this morning. But I have this little lantern here um, with me and I want to light the small night light inside the lantern and this is for you, it's for everyone connected to us and in your imagination please imagine yourself receiving this light and it being brought um, into your home and wherever you are um, this morning. This light is for you and it's the light of Christ um, shared for you and for the world. So this light here, now in its lantern, um, is for you and please imagine it being brought into your own home in the same way that we would have brought the Easter candle into the church this Easter morning. reading from the book of Genesis. Just before we have the reading, I'd like to say a prayer to announce the vigil and also just explain a little bit about what the vigil is about. And we hold vigil before the first Eucharist of Easter and we read from scripture the saving work of God throughout the period from creation up until Jesus' birth. As we await the risen Christ, let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, recalling how he saved his people in ages past and in the fullness of time sent his son to be our redeemer. And let us pray that through this Easter celebration, God may bring to perfection in each of us the saving work he has begun. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, 
and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky, to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, 
I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And the response to this psalm today is, Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honour and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You stretch out the tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone, and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. 
Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in a pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them, into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Song of Moses and Miriam. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. I will, I will sing, sing to the Lord who has triumphed, triumphed gloriously. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. I will sing, sing to the, the Lord, Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. I will we'll sing, sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. I will sing, sing to the Lord, Lord who has triumphed, triumphed gloriously. At the blast of your nostrils, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed, triumphed gloriously. gloriously. And by your invincible strength, you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. I will, I will sing, sing to the Lord, Lord who, who has triumphed, triumphed gloriously. I wanted to add one word of explanation. The reading from the book of Exodus is the one set reading of the Easter Vigil and it's an account of God bringing the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the Promised Land. And it's a promise for all time that God brings to freedom those who've been living in slavery. Lord God, our Redeemer, you heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery. Free us from the tyranny of sin and death. And by the leading of your spirit, bring us to our promised land through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel. Then he brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There water was flowing from below the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. And the water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me round on the outside to the outer gate that faces towards the east. And the water was coming out on the south side. Going on eastwards with a cord in his hand, the man measured 1,000 cubits and then led me through the water and it was ankle deep. Again, he measured 1,000 and led me through the water and it was knee deep. Again, he measured 1,000 and led me through the water and it was up to the waist. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, mortal, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. As I came back, I saw on the bank of the river a great many trees on one side and on the other. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Araba. And when it enters the sea, the sea of stagnant waters, the water will become fresh. Wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live and there will be very many fish once these waters reach there. It will become fresh and everything will live wherever it goes. People will stand fishing beside the sea from En Gedi to En Eglame, and it will be a place for the spreading of nets. Its fish will be of a great many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are to be left for salt. On the banks, on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of tree and food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water from them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The response to the psalm. God is our refuge and strength. God, God is our, our refuge, refuge and, and strength. strength. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains tremble in the heart of the sea. Though the waters rage and swell, and though the mountains quake at the towering seas, God, God is, is our, our refuge, refuge and, and strength. strength. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the dwelling of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her at the break of day. God, God is our refuge and strength. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church. By the Spirit's gifts, equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray that we may reign with the risen Christ in glory. The Collect for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And this is a special collect written for this period when the world is afflicted by the COVID-19 virus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain us and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We have our first New Testament reading. A reading from the book of Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did 
both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she returned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went 
and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. By God's grace, may I speak in his name, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Easter liturgy is the defining liturgy of the whole year. It's big, as you can see, and counter-culturally, it's also long, as you'll experience. Though I'm aware that this year, uniquely for us, you'll be able to do a little fast forwarding if you want to, when it appears in its entirety on the church Facebook page and on our newly created YouTube channel. The Easter liturgy has four main elements. The vigil, which involves a survey of God's saving work before the birth of Jesus, from creation and most significantly demonstrated in the Exodus, the movement from slavery to freedom, from Egypt to the Promised Land. The liturgy involves the service of light, which proclaims the resurrection, with the Easter candle symbolising Christ, Christ whose light shines in the darkness, a light so desperately needed and longed for at this time more than ever in my lifetime. There's the liturgy of initiation, which we'll come to, the time when we renew our baptismal vows and recommit ourselves to the life of the risen Christ. And I'd like to offer prayers, especially today, this year, for Tanaya and for Perry, who I would have baptised today if it weren't for COVID-19. And we look forward very much to being with their families on the glorious day of their baptism. And then the last part of the Great Easter Liturgy, the first Eucharist of Easter, when we are sacramentally reunited with our risen Lord, a communion which this year, again uniquely in my lifetime, many of you will receive spiritually and not in person, which also makes this live streaming of the Eucharist celebrated here in the rectory especially poignant and important in my mind. More about spiritual communion a bit later in the service, something that has come alive for me this year, again more than in any other year. One might think, very sincerely, that it's obscene to wish somebody a happy Easter this year when our city, our country and our world is afflicted by the COVID-19 virus. I'd like to argue the very opposite, that it's more important this year than in any that I can remember. And I'd like to add just a little theology. The risen Christ's resurrected body is still wounded. Jesus invites Thomas to touch the wounds in his side. As Christians, we don't say Christ is risen and everything is all right in the world. That would be obscene in this or any other year. 
what we believe is that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, dwelt among the pain and the grief and the illness of our world as much as among the joy. And on the cross, he bore the sins of the world and died. And then on the third day, he rose again, not forgetting the pain and the grief and the illness, nor the joy, but carrying all that, his body still wounded, but also transfigured and transformed. On Thursday, I should have been at St. Paul's Cathedral to receive the holy oils, to bring back to the parish, but also to renew my ordination vows. And I decided to print those vows off. And I set a copy to my colleague, Jill, and we made a commitment that we would look at them together, but each in their own time. Hers as a deacon, mine as a priest, and a deacon. And one line I read this year really struck me. For priests, but personally I think this could quite properly be for a deacon as well, we are told that with their fellow ministers, we are to proclaim the word of the Lord and to watch for the signs of God's new creation. Now that would be absurd in this of all years if we weren't also alert to the huge suffering around us, alert to parents unable to be beside their dying child, to NHS workers who are dying by virtue of living out their calling, to countries whose medical infrastructure will strain to breaking point if this virus were to take hold as it has done in so many countries in the world. We see that, we respond in prayer and wherever possible in action to these immense challenges. And at the same time, we watch for signs of God's new creation. And I just wanted to mention a few of these signs that I've seen, and I'm sure that there are others that you have seen and we could make a really long and fuller list than I'm able to offer. But just a few signs of God's new creation, even in the midst of what the world is going through. Take the natural world. Alpine air in cities, rivers and canals turning from green, turning to green, turning to blue from green or brown. Stopping this year very dramatically has revealed so much about what's wrong with the way we live. Not going back to that would hasten God's new creation. Take another example. People helping one another. Just in our own parish, an extraordinary group of people volunteering to allow people to be at home by doing their shopping and looking after their prescriptions happening all over the world, people coming to the aid of others in adversity. A sign of God's new creation. And in terms of the life of the church, think about faith at home. Think about our understanding of prayer as our best connectivity without any computer or telephone. Think about the need now more than ever to have a rhythm of life at home that incorporates your faith 
that allows you to pray and to grow in faith, even if you're on your own at home. Think about simple household things. And I'm very aware that there are people living alone at this time, but also aware that there are people living in families and all sorts of other relationships. And both in living alone, but also relating to neighbours and friends and family who aren't physically there, but who are with you and who need relating to. But also in terms of family life and life with others who you happen to be sharing your household with at this time. It's a time to renew those relationships, a time to think about how we live. Think about the most recent emphasis on the care of the vulnerable and those with health conditions. They're very much at the forefront of their minds at the moment. But it's really worth remembering that those people were always there. It's just that they've been brought into sharp focus. And when we return to our everyday lives, it's really important to remember that their needs in ordinary time is are just as acute as they are now. It struck me preparing for this service that the back door of the rectory faces east, just as the church does. And while I love the church and miss it, though I miss her people more, it also struck me that filming the Eucharist here beside the back door has one advantage over the Easter liturgy celebrated in the church. And that's that both the rectory back door and the church faced east. And the tradition is that they face Jerusalem, but they also face the rising sun. And so there could be nowhere better than to celebrate the Easter liturgy than with the sun rising behind us or in front of us. I'd like you to remember the light of Christ shining as it's taken from the new fire towards the candle holder in the darkness. I'd like you to have that light shining in your heart at this time especially. I'd like you to remember the inside of our church and our east window. In the east window we have Christ the healer and there are people who are unwell being brought to him from both sides of the little other side windows. I'd like you to remember that image that we can remember of Christ the healer in our east window, bringing healing to us and to our world. And I hope very much that you've enjoyed seeing the sun rise this morning and alongside the candle as the light of Christ. It's a reminder of God's new creation. It's a reminder of all that is good in the world and of its glory and of its beauty. And it's the reminder of the dawning of a new day. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. grateful to my family for supplying all the music today and now we're going to sing our hymn which is love's redeeming work is done Oh, 
eclipses are, lo, he sets in blood no more. Pain the stone, the watch, the seal, Christ has bought the gates of hell. Death in vain forbids his rise, Christ has opened paradise. Lives again our glorious King, Where all death is now thy sting. Dying once he all the same, Where thy victory To thee by both be given. Thee we greet triumphant now. Hail the resurrection now. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ. Let us pray to the Father. Dear Lord, we give you thanks and praise for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that you are more powerful than death. We thank you for his victory over the grave. We thank you for him as a sign and foundation of God's new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world. all Christian people celebrating this day. We remember our own links with the Delhi Brotherhood and with Christians in Mozambique and Angola. And we pray for church communities dear to us. We pray for the whole of the Anglican Communion. We pray for Archbishop Justin and Archbishop John. In this diocese, we pray for Bishop Sarah and for Bishop Joanne. We pray for the churches of this deanery in Hackney, for our neighbours, for our friends. We pray for all the different denominations represented in this part of London. We pray for people of all faith and none. Pray that you may raise up all people of goodwill We pray for your church at this time. Pray that even with our doors closed, we may find ways to live out the risen life of your son, new and different ways, ways to serve our communities and our nation and our world in action, in prayer. We pray that we may serve this neighborhood well. And we pray that in being the church in a different way, it may be a time of renewal for us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for your world, for all those suffering at this time. We remember those who've died. We pray for those who are unwell. We pray for those who are grieving. 
We pray for those who are anxious about loved ones. So we pray for our hospitals, locally we pray for the Homerton Hospital and for the London Hospital, we pray for St Joseph's Hospice, we pray for Jane in her chaplaincy there and for the whole of the chaplaincy team. We pray for hospitals throughout our country and we pray especially for Harlow Hospital and for Jill and for all those involved in chaplaincy in the hospital. And we pray for doctors and nurses and we thank you for them and for all those working in hospitals and in GP surgeries and all other contexts at this time. We thank you for their dedication and we pray for their protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for family and friends, especially for those far away. Pray that even if we're unable to see them, we may communicate in different ways and be builded up in faith and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the congregation at St John of Jerusalem, for all the people of the parish of South Hackney, and for people around the world. Pray for protection Pray for unity Pray that you will help us to work together To bring life Even out of this terrible situation Lord in your mercy Hear mm -hmm. our prayer we pray for all who've died recently, especially for Roger Blackstone, Danielle Atkinson, Irene Marion Desmet. We pray for our own loved ones and any we know who died recently. And we give thanks on their anniversaries for the lives of Judith Cannell, Vera Howell, and Doris Skinner. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Dear Lord, in remembering the sick, we remember our own Prime Minister. We remember all those in hospital, those recovering from being in intensive care, and for those remaining in intensive care today. We pray for those in government and those in opposition for policy makers and scientists, for your blessing upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before God our own prayers.
Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the resurrection of your Son. Pray that we may live out his risen life. And we pray for eyes to see your new creation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was mentioning in my homily about the renewal of baptismal vows. Traditionally in the life of the church, this was a day for baptism. We are unable to baptise today, but we are able to renew our baptism vows together. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through the Paschal mystery, we have died and been buried with him in baptism. I have the words of our renewal of vows. They've also been sent out on our church website, www.sjoj.co.uk, and so the words are also present there. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I, I reject, reject them. them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? I repent of them. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ? the way, the truth, and the life. I come to Christ. Praise God, who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ was baptised in the River Jordan, we thank you for the gift of water to cleanse and revive us. We thank you that through the waters of the Red Sea, you led your people out of slavery to freedom in the Promised Land. We thank you that through the deep waters of death, you brought your son and raised him to life in triumph. Bless this water that your servants who are washed in it may be made one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection, to be cleansed and delivered from all sin. Send your Holy Spirit upon them. Bring them to new birth. In the household of faith, and raise them with Christ to full and eternal life for all might, majesty, authority and power are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's a joyful moment in the Easter liturgy when we have renewed our baptism vows and as a sign of the waters of baptism, the waters blessed in the font um, are sprinkled over everyone so that they can be reminded of their baptism. Today we have a portable font but the symbolism and the action is exactly the same. And so I would like to sprinkle you with the waters of baptism to remind you of your baptism. And we give thanks for those who brought us to baptism or to that decision that we made for ourselves. And this is a sign of God's blessing on you and a reminder of your baptism. There's also a tradition that I need to be reminded as well. And so that's what's gonna happen now. Almighty God, we thank you for our fellowship in the household of faith with all who have been baptized in your name Keep us faithful to our baptism, and so make us ready for that day when the whole creation shall be made perfect in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love, and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. I'd like to share the peace um, with everyone and to pray for God's peace to be in your heart and in your homes. And on Easter Day, our sharing of the peace is a tiny bit different from usual. We share the peace and I will say, Christ is risen. And if you'd like to respond, he is risen indeed. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right to do so. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works, for by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He's placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation Sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks to you he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, having in remembrance the precious death and passion of your dear Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, entirely desire your fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion, 
And although we be unworthy, through our manifold sins, to offer you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this, our bounten duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, and to grant that all we, who are partakers of this Holy Communion, may be fulfilled with your grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace like to remind you of the idea of spiritual communion, which is that your desire for the Eucharist, your desire to be present and to receive, is something that God honours and that in making a spiritual communion of that type, of that degree of sincerity, with that depth, you are able to receive all the benefits of the Eucharist itself as if you had been present in person. And I'd like to lead you through a prayer which kindles, I pray, in you that very desire and therefore allows you to receive your Easter communion spiritually. If you'd like to say after me, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For all the benefits you have given me. For all the benefits you have given me. For all the pains and insults you have borne for me. For all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally. I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly. May I know you more clearly. Love you more dearly. Love you more dearly. And follow you more nearly day by day. And follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. body of Christ, mm -hmm. the body of Christ.
our prayer after communion. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I wanted to send love to everyone. Um, I'm very aware of my colleagues who I can't be with at the moment, so I am thinking of Jill and Doug and Manuela. I'm thinking of our wardens, Datru and Val. I think of our church council. I think of all our church members at this time and people connected to our church community and our families. And I wanted to send love and prayers uh, to all of you and pray that, as I was trying to say in my sermon, that even in the midst of all that's going on, we are able to celebrate together that Christ is risen today and that that brings us hope and comfort and strength and that we can continue as we always have done to be one body and just find new ways to do that. And I'm absolutely sure that by God's grace we can. So I send you love and I send you prayers and all of us, um, clergy and trainee clergy and wardens and church council, all of us um, send love. It's a time for shared ministry, undoubtedly. It's always a time for shared ministry, but e now even more than ever, um, where we try to um, care for each other and continue the life of the church in different ways. Um, and sure and confident that those different ways will bring us new life and, and will be a sign of God's new creation. So a very happy Easter and God bless you and keep you. I'm going to finish um, with singing um, Thine Be the Glory and please feel free to sing along at home. Conquering sun, endless is the victory the Lord has won. Angels in bright raiment roll the stone away, kept the folded grave clothes where thy body lay. Thy Sun. Endless is the victory the Lord has won. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let the church with gladness hymns of triumph sing, for her Lord now liveth, death has lost its sing. Thine be the glory, risen conquering sun, and let Prince of life. Life is not without thee. Aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. 
Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine be the glory, risen conquering Son. Endless is the victory, thou, O death, hast won. Easter blessing and dismissal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory. Give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.